Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Today I'm going to do a quick and simple build, but let me take you over to the table saw and show you what I'm going to be making. Now there's some pretty interesting steps along the way, so you're not going to want to miss those, so uh, follow along as we uh, go through this process. Well today I'm going to be making a height measuring tool for my table saw. Now you've seen me use these little measuring bars and they work quite handy. There's a 3 8 there's a half inch size. And basically all you do is lay it against the blade like this and adjust the blade up and down and try and figure out exactly where the top of the blade is uh, and where that the, where it is relevant to the bar. Now that all works well and good except for the fact that Sometimes I'm changing plates. Sometimes this plate is not, in fact, it's always a little bit lower than the table. So the height of the blade in relation to the rest of the table is not always exactly the same as what's here. So what, here's what I want to build. I need to measure from the actual table to the blade. So what I'm going to make is a U-shaped type of thing like this with feet and the the feet will be on either side on the table and in the middle there will be a rod that moves up and down that actually sets the height of the blade or measures the height of the blade. And that's what it'll look like. Now these kinds of measuring devices are not new. They've been around for a long time. I've never had one, never made one and because Sometimes my blade is not as accurate as it needs to be, particularly when I'm doing uh, dado cuts. Um, I thought this is a perfect time to do that, so it's a fairly quick and easy build. Let's get to it. Now I just checked the measurements. It needs to be 8 inches wide so that it's on the outside of the table saw insert. Okay, so let me show you what we're going to be doing. So what you're looking at from the camera side is this is the bottom of the jig. And here's that where that U-shape comes in. And we'll use our hole saw to make a nice round in here. And then we'll trim that with the band saw. And we'll cut basically cut this area out. So I marked here with the felt pen and it kind of bled, you can see that but uh, I need to drill a couple of holes there. But what I need to do first of all is because I'm going to be using a piece of cutoff of this um, miter gauge material or miter slot material, plastic, nice hard plastic, and we'll use that to slide up and down uh, and that'll be perfect for that. It'll, it'll retain it nicely. It won't get caught in the wood. And what I need to do right now is to cut a dado in there. And because I'm only cutting one dado, I'm just going to use the blade that's already in my table saw and we'll just make a, a series of cuts. It'll be just about as quick as taking it all apart and putting a dado blade in for one cut. Okay, and back to the table saw and you can see the marks on there where I'm going to be making the cuts and let's get going. So there's that uh, plastic material, and it's a little snug, but I think it's going to be fine. I may need to do a little bit of sanding on it, but uh, for the most part, that's perfect. Next, we need to drill out the holes. I could drill these holes out on the drill press, uh, but I think the hand drill is going to work just as well. And I've already put a hole in there, a starting hole. Now before I go over to the bandsaw and take this U-shaped part out, I'm just going to take some of the excess material off here.
Okay, to save a little bit of time now, I've cut this little piece of plastic and drilled four holes in it. And I made it just big enough that the four holes will be just on either side of the slot here. Now while I was at the drill press, you can see I did a little bit of countersinking and now I just want to seat this T-nut in here. And you could use square, but I happen to have a round dowel that's just about the right size. And we'll just seat that in there. And that should be flush when it's done. That looks good. Okay. The next thing I do is well, I want to scribe a line on my plexiglass marker here and I've got this sharp point here and I'm going to scribe it across three or four times so that I get it fairly deep and in the same place. Now if I'm lucky what we can do with these is use a felt pen and go right down the middle of that line just like that. Now that doesn't actually look too bad. But when you take your finger and run it over, it takes away the excess and it should leave just a fine line right in the middle where the ink got down in the bottom of that hole. And that looks pretty good. Now it's time to put the plastic plate on. You can see the line there, nice fine line, and I've countersunk these holes um, because I have matching screws that and they need to make sure that they're countersunk. So before I do anything, I want to make sure that I mark these. And you need to make sure you don't go too hard on this plastic or you'll split it. And now if I strip that tape down, it's double-sided tape on the back here, so there it is. And I need to put it roughly Now I also cut a couple of extra pieces when I was cutting the plastic and I'm just going to put some double-sided tape on those as well. We've got everything all set up. Let me go over to the table saw and we'll show you a little trick. Oh, by the way, we still need to put the, the screw in, but you know what I do before I put this in, I, this is just a piece of, uh, little piece of plastic and I just want to cut that off because I don't like the metal touching up against that plastic in there. I want to put just a little tiny bit of plastic in there so that when I put that in, it, uh, it's plastic against plastic. There we go. Otherwise the metal can sometimes drill holes in the plastic. So we loosen it up, it goes up and down, we tighten it, there we go. All right, let's go over to the table saw. Now I know everybody knows how to use one of these things. You set the height according to whatever it is you want. Um, and you go in and you set it across on the table and then you adjust your, the height of your blade accordingly. But there's some little, like a lot of things in woodworking, there's little tricks. I'm going to show you a little trick. And I'm just going to use this as an example because it's quick and easy. So this is just another piece of, of miter slot material, plastic miter slot material. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut out of just a piece of the old cutoff that we use for making this. Uh, I'm going to cut a rabbit, for example, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And you don't even have to look at anything. We set this down here and now I'm going to set this according to the top of the, the miter slot material. And now all I need to do is to set the height of the blade. And we do that by just moving it back and forth, make sure it's on the table. 
and when the blade moves that's the correct height. But I can also set the width of it. So I lay it on the side and go like that and now when I turn, and that's why we wanted to put the plastic on the other side, now I can set the fence. So I don't even have to look at anything. I can just set the fence now like that and I know it's already set up. And that's only half the cut. The next cut, now we've already set the width, so now we have to reset the height and we do that quickly. And we already set it on the gauge. Now we just want to set the height one more time. Reset the fence. And now we should be able to cut a perfect rabbit. And there it is. Absolutely perfect on both sides. Isn't that amazing? Well, that concludes my video on making the little adjustment gauge, and you could use it for a a height adjustment or a depth adjustment, even a fence adjustment as you can see. And you could use this on your drill press, you could use it on your table saw, your router table, um, your circular saw and probably stuff that I haven't even thought of yet, but uh, pretty handy little tool, uh, especially when you utilize uh, the surface on the other side. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, we ask you to do that. Like us on Facebook, uh, follow us on Twitter, uh, and stay tuned because i got lots more videos coming.